Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. So before I start with a general tarot reading for October for your sign, I first want to do a quick smudge and a meditation so we can release the energy for September and invite new one in for October. All right, so if you're for some reason not capable of getting into the meditation right now or you want to come back later to it, then you can find the link or the timestamp link um, in the comment section that will take you right up to the point where I start the tarot reading. All right, if you are in for it, then join me on this journey. Let's get started. Thank you for tuning in to this meditation. Get comfortable. In whatever way, shape or form that is for you, you can lay down, you can sit up, you can maybe stand, walk around in nature. It's whatever for you is the most comfortable way. Okay, I'm going to start off with smudging some white sage. You can open your eyes or keep your eyes open. Maybe you want to close them once again whatever makes you feel comfortable this is a safe space so whatever emotion or feeling comes up allow it to come in and allow it to get out right there's no right no wrong whatever is meant to come up will always will come up but we're here to release and let go all right releasing all the energy from the month of September all the low frequencies all the insecurities the uncertainties the worries the lack the losses, we release it now. We don't need it anymore. Releasing the fear, all that is not serving our highest good, we let it go. Breathe in, breathe out, releasing the weight, we take from September what was serving us. The moments of inner peace, the moments of gratitude, the moments of laughter and joy, the moments of growth, the moments of expansion, the moments of soul to soul connections. Breathe in. Breathe out. We're inviting in high frequency for October. May this month show us beauty inside of us and all around us. May we be open for opportunities that want to come and flow towards us. May we invite in growth and expansion. May we feel the love for ourselves and for each other and approach ourselves and others from a place of compassion and kindness and patience. Breathe in and 
breathe out. Thank you. You can open up your eyes if they were closed. Namaste. I see you. Thank you for joining this meditation. Let's get into the general tarot reading for October. All right, Sagittarius, how are you doing? Thank you for tuning in. So let's tune in for the last part of October for you. My apologies that I'm... So let's tune in for the last part of October for you. My apologies that I'm this late. Never happened before. Hopefully never will, but it's just what it is. And um, I guess I'm here in divine timing, all right? All right, let's see. Let's tune in what's coming in for you guys. Ooh, I like that. So the six of wands and the ten of wands. It's not easy to be in the spotlight when it comes to the south node energy. You know, the south node being in your sign, it does give you attention and people's energy. But sometimes you kind of just don't want that. You just want to be and you just want to go do your thing without people just looking at you. Because I feel for some of you... There is this energy of, I kind of had, I like was almost thinking back to a place in your life where you didn't have that sense of pressure or you weren't working with certain deadlines or before, for example, you became a parent or before you got in a marriage or a long, you know, a, a relationship. It's different, you know, it's different if you, for example, have like a job next to your study, um, you know, next to school. Um, it's a different type of job if you're actually out there making a career it's a different type of um, responsibilities that come with that I mean it's good because you're progressing things are flowing things are growing um, but then again sometimes that those eyes on you does come with a certain weight and I think that that's an energy I'm picking up on so Sometimes you just want to follow something in, without being the leader, you know? There's a difference between following your intuition and just following the flow of things instead of following, going away, but being a leader at the same time. There's a difference in that. So you have the Empress energy that comes in as well. For some of you, it's really a, a pregnancy. And it's nice because people are happy and, you know... But for you, it might actually just feel a little bit heavy. It's a little bit intense. You know, it could be, doesn't necessarily have to be a pregnancy, but it could also just be motherhood in general, or, you know, um, just feeling like the um, being, the empress, comes with a level of responsibility that is not always the thing that you would want to do that particular day like having a home having a mortgage um just being on that level of maturity sometimes you just want to want to feel free so i see a shift and change happening in that it's almost like i used to do it for the bigger collective i used to do it for the group i used to be the leader and and, and bring people together which you guys always do but now you kind of just want to enjoy it you see, this person has a level of success, a level of recognition. You see those followers behind them. It's like all ruling for what you're doing, getting success, overcoming. People are being proud of how strong you are and how uh, resilient you, you've been, Sag. And then I see that that kind of, you know, was quite a weight on you with the Ten of Wands. But here we have the Empress. The Empress has the same amount of success, the same amount of abundance and things like that and holds herself so beautifully strong and powerful because that's her natural sense of strength to see tapped into it doesn't have to be see in like a woman it's just that part and i see with the empress here she just thought, did it for herself because it made her feel secure made her feel happy those are the things that were important for her and her future and i think that there's an energy shift in that okay so Two of Wands, yeah. Well, because from that standpoint, I feel that what isn't really important for you, because it's all fire energy, you know, it's really your element that comes through. What's really important for you 
but closing out Libra season and opening and stepping into Scorpio is still really understand the deeper level of purpose connection with your emotions how you're feeling how you've really been doing actually what you need i think your needs your soul needs are really on the forefront in making new plans i see you making new plans it's like okay i wanted to do this i did this now i'm ready for something new and i feel like being happy and feeling a sense of balance within your life is just important and you start to really feel the importance of it very powerful two of swords with the six of pentacles overthinking uh, relationships and connections with people how much that's actually equal how much that relationship is driving on you giving and you being present or you you know bringing up and lifting up the energy around that connection doesn't necessarily need to be um you know relationship wise or romantic wise could also definitely be a close friend work business partner like how good the business is driving might actually has to do way more with your input than the other person but i see that the tree of pentacles indicates that a person really wants to work together on an equal basis okay it's like you almost got a little bit in the two of swords energy of needs for contemplation because in order to have all of this action and have all of this working and moving forward it's important to understand exactly where you're coming from sometimes we first need to have that realization moment of like okay this is where it's not really flowing this is why i feel away or this is why i'm feeling drained lately this is why it feels this heavy like knowing why and then you can move and 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 look on how to work um with other people to move forward and away out of that situation all right so you have the emperor as well could be doing with another fire sign but i feel this emperor energy coming in because look how beautiful this is the empress and the emperor shows up showed up together as a couple and i feel like when you are in a connection such it's very important that you both have your own thing and you both are good at your own thing so he or she like when we spoke like he is the king of this or that you are the queen or vice versa right uh, of that particular thing and by both being in your own natural state but both having that thing outside the relationship or outside that friendship or outside the business ship um, business partnership brings in a level of happiness see the ace of cups comes in from you feeling like you have the control in your own life you taking a lead in a connection in a position really brings in change with the ace of cups and the wheel of fortune definitely strongly indicates that working together what i feel what i'm really picking up on is that you have enough from something at your work it's like uh, i know one sec like as you want you want to make a shift and i really feel it's almost work related like i can do it on my own it's like thank you for the opportunity but i'm going to move forward i'm going to do it on my own you're going to be going to be self-employed going to focus upon your own business maybe it's future sense but it's like that really does bring you that sense of fulfillment and happiness an abundant feeling of like you can be at the top but still it feels so happy because it's almost like you're working for someone else's dream see and with the will of fortune really indicates it's an end of an era for you Sag you started with the world card an end of an era all right I'm gonna clarify it with another tarot deck to see where we want to clarify decisions needed to be made with the lovers we have the beautiful queen of pentacles so it really indicates that sense of stability the temperance healing 
within the balance of the connection, within the give and the take. I'm hearing a sense of security. You have the Six of Pentacles once again, right? You have the Six of Pentacles already. It's clarified by Six of Pentacles with the Ace of Pentacles. That looks really good. And especially because the Empress here as well and the Queen of Pentacles, I really do see the money situation coming to, to a much more balanced place. Powerful. Healing. You see how funny it is that these two both give the other way. See, this one gives to this and this one gives to that one. And it's just back and forth. I give you some. You give me some. And together we make it work. All right. Why am I making such a mess out of it today? <laughs> All right. Let me just put it in here. Yes. Okay. My Virgo moon is shining through the OCD. <laughs> All right. One more card. There we go. You have the Knight of Swords. Things are about to move pretty quickly for you. And the Two of Pentacles wanted to come true with the Two of Swords. You know, there might be multiple things on your mind. There might be multiple options to choose from. You might be going back and forth between one or the other thing. Should I? Shouldn't I? And is it the right time? Is it not? It's like going back and forth. But I see you cutting out that confusion real quick when you um, focus on when you look at it from a different standpoint like you have that epiphany moment this month and i feel like you know we're already reading a little bit for november as well because that energy is flowing in because normally around this time of the month i do the monthlies but yeah i just feel like this month is sort of indicated like connected to each other anyway energy wise because of mercury being a retrograde and comes direct in November. Mars being in retrograde comes also direct in November. So it's just all coming to a close. We shouldn't want to um, focus too much upon the months, like being strictly to like 31st, you know, and that's it. <laughs> Energy flows. Um, but that aside, I see things quickly clearing up. So much more clarity is coming in on what, what you want to do, where you want to go. You don't miss out on your own ability to lead. All right? Don't neglect your own leader within yourself. You come to that point where you're being asked to step in and lead, Sag. You should, should go for it. Because in that leadership, there's so much more for you to learn and to gain than the pathway you feel stuck in. If it feels like a weight and should feel like a relief, you know it's not the right thing for you at this time anymore. And sooner or later, it's time to choose a different pathway. And that's really positive and it's really good. And you're not late or not, you know, backtracking. It's just as is let me pick up a uh, spirit message for you phil there's a message hiding in there sagittarius 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 choices <laughs> i gotta laugh because it, it comes right back to this making a decision having that epiphany when you accept responsibility for your life and the choices you make, you begin to tap into a power of your own spirit. You'll be able to listen and to appreciate the intuitive wisdom that is inside of you and apply it positively and constructively to your outside world. All right? Don't underestimate your own ability. That wisdom lays within you. The universal wisdom lays within all of you sag it's it's a different i always say this you know you guys can tap into sort of a surfer you can put your usb in there and download the information other signs do not have that usb 
key. Okay, you guys do have it. But I come to a center point where you feel you can listen and tap into it and use it as a compass. You don't always have to use it as a leader, as a pathway, but you can use it as a compass, knowing where you are, you know, to balance yourself. And from that perspective, from that wisdom, make your step. So take a responsibility for the choices you make in your life. There's so much power into that. Because if you take a responsibility for knowing that you made certain decisions and that had certain outcomes, you also know you have the entire power of making a change in it. And that gives you that sense of drive again. Like it's not just all happening to you. It has also a lot of power and leading leadership that you can reclaim and take on and be the leader. A natural one, not the one in the eyes of other people, but a natural one. Sometimes you gotta do things that aren't making, that doesn't make everybody happy or like your most favorite person, but it does help them forward, you know? That's the thing, sometimes tough love is the best love you can give, even though it hurts. Even though it's not your first thing you will go for. Even this is the first thing that people would ask from you. Sometimes we enable people to help themselves by helping them too much. And you're actually hurting them instead of helping them. And I think understanding a healthy balance in that is actually really giving something to, to someone. That's what I'm picking up on right now for you guys. All right, I'm going to jump in a little bit deeper into the situation over here in the extended. All right, I'm gonna do a small extended for you guys on my Patreon. You can go check it out. The, the link is in the description box. But if you feel already like, no, this is the message I needed and you just wanna tune back in for November reading, which I will be doing a little bit different, which I'm really excited about. But it's going to be the same, but it's going to be a little bit different. But you're going to have to check, <laughs> tune in to check it out, okay? I won't be this late, I promise that. All right, I love you, Serge. Have an amazing hello and happy and scary Halloween, if that's something you celebrate. Um, I'm sending you love and light. And uh, you got this, all right? Bye, Serge.